So to start, I'm going to do a Google search for this successional planting plan. So I'm going to search for that. And if I put the word sugarloaf, it should come up for sure. It is there. So I did a blog post about this um, last year in September, you can see there. And it basically was written after reading the Australian Permaculture Magazine, where there was an article about how to very simply map out a plan so that when you're planting crops, you get a succession happening. In other words, you don't have a big lut um, where everything is ready at the same time or in the same, say, two-week period. We have all this food that you have to then work really hard to preserve. If you try and do successional planning, well then you try and have your harvest extended over several months and you do that by staggering your planting of your crops. So after reading that article, I thought, well, what was in the article looks very similar to something you could make on a spreadsheet. And so I have a IT background in teaching secondary school so I thought well I'll make a spreadsheet so what I'm going to demonstrate first is using Google spreadsheets and then I'll do it again but using Excel so Google documents if you don't know already they are online documents where you are working in an, in a browser basically and every time you make a change it sends the data back to the Google servers and it gets saved automatically and you have access to it whenever you log into your Google account. The nice thing about this is that you can collaborate with other people and I'll talk about that near the end. So have a look through this article if you want to for the details. Down here there's a link to find the spreadsheet and it does say there that you need to be logged into a Google account in order to make a copy of the spreadsheet. So now that I'm signed in, um, a lot more of the functionality, all these little buttons and that are now available. Um, I can edit it now because I'm the owner, but what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to click on File, Make a Copy. I'll do that just to show you what it involves. You can now give it your own name if you want, or you can just leave it as copy of plan. Click OK. Obviously, you can't edit my copy, okay, because I don't want everyone editing my copy. So, yeah, I've given you permission so that you can make a copy, and then once you've made a copy, you can make as many changes as you want to the spreadsheet. So what I'm going to do now is just give you a brief overview of what the spreadsheet looks like and how to use it. Okay, down the bottom there are tabs showing the different sheets. At the moment we have a master sheet and a sheet for the 2017-18 growing season. So the master, as the name indicates, is kind of like your template. So what I suggest you do is, is modify anything on this template until you're happy with it. So I'll show you a couple of things that you can do. Underneath column it says crop. There's a little drop down arrow and when you click that you see all the different veggies that I could think of that you might want to plant in your garden. And when you click on something it, it then selects that for you. Now that list of all those different vegetables you might want to update that straight away. Okay, so you need to then go to data and data validation. When you click on data validation, you can see that the cell is getting validated by a list of items. And in this box here, you can see all the different vegetables. So if there's something that you call different, so I, some people call arugula rocket, for example, and if, if that's what you want, then you could take out arugula. I've actually got rocket down the bottom there. It's the same thing. 
Um, and you might want to add in some other things that you're going to grow or take out the things you know for sure or you're never going to grow fennel or then take out fennel. Okay, they do need a comma to separate each word and I've put them in alphabetical order. Then you can click save. Okay, so what that's done now, it saved it only for this cell that's selected. If I click the down arrow, you can see that there's no arugula at the top and there should be no fennel. And fennel's gone. Okay, but if we click on the cell underneath, that hasn't updated the cell underneath. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to copy the validation on the cell to all the cells underneath. Easiest and most simple, quickest way is that when the cell is selected, there's this little square on the bottom right hand corner. So put your mouse on that until your mouse changes to a crosshair. Then click and drag it down. Let it scroll a little bit. I've made um, about 60 rows. Okay, and then when you let it go here, it's now copied everything down. Okay, now copy down Basil, which I don't really want. I'm just going to press delete. But let's just double check. Yep, yeah, okay, so rule is gone. Fennel's gone. Okay, so that's now updated the, the drop down lists for all the cells in the crop column. Next column is for variety. There's no drop down here because you just enter that because there's so many different varieties of lettuce and cabbages and so on. Okay, for succession, there's just the numbers 1 to 15. Same thing if you want to change that. If you don't want so many uh, numbers, you only want up to 10, or if you want 20 or 25, you do the same thing. Go to data, data validation, change it, and then drag it down. Dragging it down is just copying and pasting it. Then in the next series of columns, we've got all the months of the year. Um, I've color coded them blue for the winter colder months and oranges for the hotter months. And underneath each month are four columns, one for each week. These also have drop downs in them. Uh, the list is G standing for sow in greenhouse. Okay, there is actually a key on the right hand side here, perhaps a little bit difficult to see. I'll just add another column in here so that you can see the key clearly. So G is for sow in greenhouse, S sow in shade house, D direct sow into your beds, T is transplant out, and H is harvest. Again, if you want to change any of these drop downs, Click on the very first cell, go to data validation, change it. If you want to see how to do the color coding, um, that's in a thing called conditional formatting, which is under the format option. Go down to conditional formatting, and there you can see the rules that I've used. So if the text contains G, you make it gray. Okay, and it matches these colors in the code. And you can change those colors to whatever you like. Okay, I try to make them fairly sensible to me where G is sort of that sort of color of plastic and the shade house, our shade house is always a, a green shade house. And then this is brown because the soil is brown. This is also brown because it's transplanting out, but it's a bit lighter because it's coming from a greenhouse or a shade house. And the harvest is, is green because most vegetables are green. But you can make those whatever you want. You could also add another series of conditional formats based on the lower letters because if you just type in small g it's not going to work. So you might want to add in all the rules for that and the conditional formatting for that. You also might want to change colors if you want to change the color of July. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, then obviously you want this to be orange. You click on the little paint bucket here and you select the color that you like. Okay, and that'll make the cell change. You can go through and change whatever you like. I'm not going to change mine, so I'm going to undo it. I'm just going to just delete that there. Okay, so what I suggest you do right in the beginning is get your master sheet exactly how you like it. 
Uh, so I've changed, updated my variety of vegetables. My succession I'm fine with, the colors I'm fine with. Um, so I'm going to go ahead then. And what I would do then is after I adjusted the master, I'm going to click the little arrow next to it. And I'm going to say that I want to duplicate it. Okay, duplicate just means make a direct copy of it. Okay, and it's, it's said that it's a copy of the master. And then I'm going to delete this 2017-18 one because that I did last time when I was, you know, as an example. I'm just going to delete that one. Okay. And then I'm going to go and rename this one. And this just shows you the basics of how to use these Google Sheets. But if you want to change the color, down click on it and change the color and choose, I choose a green color. Okay, and then once you start doing your plan, make sure that you're always using this one and leave your master, you leave the template alone. If you really want to, you could protect it. Click on the arrow there and protect it and then that uh, I think asks you for a password and it stops you from editing it. That's kind of useful too if you're sharing this with one or two other people. You don't want them to change the master by mistake. I'll protect it. Okay, so click back on this tab here so that we're changing our plan for this current season. And I'll just demonstrate now how to actually go about making a plan for a crop. So let's choose um, carrot, for example. Okay, carrot's very simple because you're just going to direct sow it in the in the ground. I don't know any variety of carrots, so it can be put in later. And for us now in in um, winter we're kind of in the middle of winter first week of July actually uh, we can direct so so I'm gonna put a D there and then I'm gonna copy this D across for how many rows it takes to how many weeks it takes to row and I'm just guessing here because I don't actually know how long it takes but with experience you'll know more or less how long it takes to do some research so I'm gonna guess it takes say three months of growing and then you might start harvesting out some baby carrots in October and you might then leave them to grow another few weeks sorry I put there on great one D is what I wanted now I'm just going to drag that across another few weeks and then I'm going to say I'm going to start harvesting for, say, three weeks, four weeks. Carrots can last quite a long time if you've got a decent row of them. Okay, so that's my first succession. So that'll give me some eating in the first week of October and then eating in the third and fourth, first and second week of November and December. Okay, so I'm going to do, let's just have an example, we'll just do four successions here so we're gonna add a third and a fourth succession okay and then let's work from when we're gonna harvest backwards it's the easiest way to work it now in the second Thinning and direct. And now, because the days are much longer and it's more sunny and warmer, the carrots might not need so long to grow. So, working backwards like this, um, you can see now it will show you basically the plant in the first week of September. Okay, let's do the third one. Now 
now maybe it's about the same. Harvest. And maybe the direct sowing is even quicker. So what's that? Two, four, six, seven weeks, two, four, six, eight weeks. So it might go down by a week. And then the last one. Okay, so there you can see that that now gives you a succession of harvests from the third week of November all the way until the second week of March. Okay, and then you might leave a couple of rows here in your spreadsheet free and then do the next vegetable. So I might do, say, um, eggplant. I might do eggplant, put in the varieties name first week. Okay, and then eggplants you probably want to start in the greenhouse and they take quite a while before we can transplant them out and then here we're going to do a transplant make the transplant the number of weeks that they are then going to grow for before they start to fruit again these are just hypothetical and then they will fruit for quite a while Okay. Um, do the same again, so we'll just make a few successions here, maybe three for eggplants. Hopefully now you get any idea, and then I, I would again work backwards. same thing here yeah, maybe you only need four weeks because it's already warm a lot warmer in the third week of August okay and I mean this cell this cell and this cell basically gives you your three planting dates and um, that's kind of how the the planning works um, what you might want to do is make a record as you go through your season and change this or update it so there's two ways you could do this you leave this as your plan um, once the whole spreadsheet is done by you maybe other people that you're collaborating with then make a copy of this and then we're going to rename it to something like record or actual So if you make a direct copy of that sheet and then in here you actually change and keep a record of when you did actually harvest. So for example if the carrots you actually only harvested them a week later, well then you just update the spreadsheet all the way along. And then when you come to use the spreadsheet the season after that, um, your actual or your record will become your plan for the next season. And that should cut down a lot of the work. I, I realize that entering and changing these cells bit by bit like this will take quite a long time the first first time for each time you add a new crop you haven't grown before but if you keep that up to date as the season goes through then the plan for the next year is pretty much done and I think that's all there is to show you good luck enjoy